Breaking the Wall to Inclusive and Democratic Watershed Management. Marc Peñalver. The Flow of the River. A Community-Based Water Monitoring System. Philippines. So hello everyone. So how was the break earlier? How much water did you take? I see a lot of water bottles. That's good. That's good. And I just realized I forgot to drink one before coming here. But for sure, there's one thing I would never forget, could not forget, and should never forget. That is the source of our water. Where does our water come from? And it comes from our watersheds. The cleaner or the healthier our watersheds, the cleaner our waters are. And that's how our potable water is, uh, is sourced from. However, our watersheds faces a lot of threats. Threats coming from whom? Coming from what? First is our solid waste management. Dis indiscriminately throwing our garbage anywhere will end up in our river system, affecting our watersheds. Second is our waste, water waste. Releasing, discharging our wastewater directly to our river system, directly to the ocean, directly to our aquifers, affect the integrity of our watersheds. Second is agribusinesses, like the monocrop plantations. Monocrop plantations and their applications of synthetic chemicals and pesticides also impact the integrity of our water, especially during rain. And rainwater runoff goes directly to our river system, affecting the water quality. Another one which is very famous in the Philippines is aerial spraying. Aerial spraying in monocrop plantations intensify the pollution of our river system with pesticides and synthetic chemicals, affecting not only our watersheds, but the people living within or near our watersheds. And this, what should we do to ensure the quality of our river or our watersheds or our water? Of course, it's through monitoring, but sometimes monitoring is left on the hands of our government agencies, the uh, water service providers. And most of the time, they don't go to these watershed areas to monitor. What they're monitoring is the end product of coming from the watersheds, sometimes. So that is where our project comes in. We partner with communities and through engaging the youth in water monitoring. So these are our youth partners in our community. We call them Bantayo Aweg. Bantayo Aweg is an indigenous people term for water guardians. So they are our heroes in water quality monitoring or ensuring our water quality is potable. So we teach them how to measure the river width, how to measure uh, phosphate or nitrate or uh, dissolve oxygen or microorganisms in the water. And we teach them how to measure the depth and of course the pH level of the water. And apart from that, of course, I don't have a science background, but I am a lawyer. So I also integrate lawyering in this water quality monitoring because the data that we gather from water quality is we use them to influence policies, influence research, and influence our media. So first, through this water quality monitoring, we were able to influence institutions, especially academic institutions. With the data that we are gathering, we were able to partner with different institutions to provide more research, to conduct more research in terms of water quality and watershed protection. We were also able to influence the media by talking about what is the importance of watersheds, how should we protect our watersheds, and what are the threats affecting our watersheds. And of course, the long term is to influence policy making. I'm sorry. Ah, yeah. Influence our policy making. That's the end goal. So because of that, this data, we were able to maximize the data that we've gathered in lobbying for policies. So these are just examples of the policies that we were able to influence. We were also able to influence the watershed code of our city because of this data gathering that we have. <coughs> And of course, we are planning to, we are focusing only in one watershed of Davao City, in one watershed of Davao City. And because that is a very critical watershed, because it's being developed right now as a 
source of drinking water of the city. So we are planning to develop it and spread it along Davao City. So you might be questioning, what is this ball all about? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not cooperating. But this ball is used. You can see how used it is. We are using this to measure the water flow. So we make a 10 by 10 meter uh, square at the river, and we put this one, release this one at the at point A, and then we allow it and time it, how long would it reach to point B? So that's how we measure the water flow. Thank you so much. Very nice work. Thank you for that presentation. Um, you talk about the, the government not going to do measurements at some places. They probably don't, it's not that they can't, they probably don't want to. Yeah. So can you tell us more about how you have influenced the policies and how they look at the communities taking these measurements that might be influencing some interests? Yes, thank you for that question. Actually, the rivers that you saw earlier, which does, is not part of the uh, water quality management area of the, of, of the Philippines or of Davao City, meaning there's no uh, monitoring uh, from coming from the government there. So that is the gap that we found. And the way to close or uh, address that gap is through democratizing uh, water quality monitoring. And that's uh, partnering with the community and engaging the youth. So with that, we were able to uh, give our data to these government agencies to utilize. And because of that, that area was declared as a critical watershed area of our city. So it is already included in our city land use plan and zoning ordinance. So right now, we are moving into a more stricter uh, protection or conservation effort. That is to declare that area as a protected water source area. So uh, how do you involve the science education or science and um, nature education part in your project? I mean, uh, people may simply monitor the water and then show the data, but how do you think science can be involved in this process and how to educate people uh, about the science in this project? Thank you. Well, basically because uh, water involves our scientific uh, parameters or uh, parameters in what water quality uh, monitoring. So what we do is that we partner this community in different institutions, and these institutions provide them with the training necessary to improve their skills in monitoring. So what we do is partnering, because this is a part, this is a part of a, an informal education for the community. So we are partnering or we are closing the gap between the formal scientific uh, education to non-formal but still scientific education. So we are also closing the gap between these two. You were speaking about management. In Europe, this is also a lot about the resource availability. So how much can you use or who is allowed to use what kind of water? Is this a question in the Philippines or do you have such an amount of water that this is not really a problem? It is a problem now in the Philippines, especially our... That is why uh, this watershed that I am presenting right now is being tapped as the source, the surface source drinking water of the city. Because for how many years we've been dependent to our aquifers. And based on a study, our aquifers cannot uh, support us in uh, like 2035. So a lot of aquifers were closed and then they are now tapping the surface water for that. So it is very critical really to engage communities in protecting these areas because they are the ones who are there. They are the ones who know the topography, the geographical uh, area of, of these uh, watersheds. So it is very important to engage them and make them realize that they are part of the solution. 